2017 has not been a good year for animated films. There's plenty great on the indie side, but as for main studio Hollywood animation, I'm not kidding when I say there have only been three films I can call good, and none above that, though that may very well change when Coco arrives here in January. For now, we have Ferdinand, the latest from Blue Sky Studios. It's arriving at a difficult time for the studio, with Ice Age now dead as a franchise, Fox now under Disney's ownership, and this film's trailers among the worst this year. But, as the titular character says in said trailer, we may think we have him, or his film, all figured out. Maybe we'll be proven wrong! So, titular Bull Ferdinand is the only Bull who doesn't want to fight in the ring like all the others, timidly favouring a non-confrontational approach to life. Following a narrow escape, he spends several happy years living on a florist's farm, beloved by his daughter. Of course, we need a film, so one guileless trip into town later, Ferdinand is sent back to that same bullfighting training area, where it becomes clear that he may have to fight to survive, despite his pacifist nature. Stories about animals struggling against the hopeless situation they're put in by humans can be hit and miss. This Ferdinand isn't up there with Babe or Animal Farm, but neither is it at the low end. You'd expect that would make it mediocre and par for the course, but it's actually better than that. Not by much. Taken as a whole, it's not even a good film, but it is a decent one, and that counts in a year as weak for American animation as this. The most interesting thing about this film is how its strengths lie in areas that you would not expect from a Blue Sky film. Perhaps it's a carryover from the picture book that has lasted all these decades, but the basic scenario and story is earnest and nice and heartfelt, and this extends to Ferdinand himself. By no means does this negate the lack of originality, which can often override the warmth, especially in the prolonged prologue, but it's a welcome surprise. However, the filmmaker's adherence to the formula of their past films undermines this strength, namely, wacky broad comedy expects true wacky and broad side characters. This is expected for most of their films, as there's nothing to be gained from focusing on the characters and arcs. But here, all that does is express a lack of confidence in their ability to make a sweet babel that'll hold viewers' attention, and turns what could have been a nice, if not especially memorable film, into one where it can feel like a chore to get to the good stuff. Now, the above implies that none of the comedy works, which isn't true. A calming goat, voiced by Kate McKinnon, is generally effective, if not quite as consistent in delivering loopy mad lines as Buck. One bull amused me for nothing more than his Scottish accent being wildly out of place among the American animals and land humans, and the sheer density of side characters ensures amusing moments from time to time. But past that, all this overextended comedy does is bulge the film to an indulgent runtime of 106 minutes. I know, Lil's more annoying than complaining about a film being over long, but there's nothing in a fable like this demanding anything past 90 minutes at best. It's not even a case of the studio being accustomed to films of that length, for both Ice Age Continental Drift and the Peanuts movie clocked in at under 90 minutes. While I am glad that the shorter production schedules of CG animation allows more flexibility in runtime and editing, as compared to traditional animation, the big studios are mostly just following modern trends, rather than letting a film's length develop organically. As for the animation, there just isn't a whole lot to say. Blue Sky certainly has a distinctive visual house style, one that I've often admired even where it lacks ambition, and which often shines when not confined to a sequel. It's a style I like a lot more than Illuminations, anyway. For all that, they've never really pushed the visual envelope in more marginal ways, mostly improving only as animation technology does, with Peanuts being a notable exception. Visually, this film reminds me mostly of Rio, easily their most exotic looking film. A lot of the same highs apply, in terms of landscapes and the colours. The humans even look similar, though thankfully there is enough of a difference, lest Blue Sky receive complaints about pooling Spanish and Brazilians together. Though the film doesn't seem very eager to show off these strengths, so they don't register as much as they could. The only off thing I felt was the texture of the bulls themselves. It's hard to say why, given the animal fur is more than fine, but it just blends together in a way that suggests cheapness, even though it's not. The film's enjoyment level can be erratic at times. An extended vehicle-centric chase sequence does little but remind the viewer of many better ones in other animated films. The film expectedly seesaws on how much it deals with the gruesome reality of what bullfighting means for the bulls, though it leans closer to the reality without being explicit about it, despite a few death cop-outs, so there's that. Only in the third act do the filmmakers really commit to their story, theme, and message, enough for the flaws in the last 15 minutes to be forgiven. I actually got just a little teary-eyed. Believe me, I'm as surprised that it happened as you are hearing it, and it left me feeling warm as the film ended. I just wish there hadn't been so much filler to get to that point.
Really, that's where we ultimately land with Ferdinand. Despite its earnestness and overall sincerity, rarities in modern children's cinema, no film with this slipshod of a commitment to its strengths and this much erratic comedy filler can be good as a whole, only in parts. It leaves us with a decent film, and while that's enough to inch it into the top half of major animated films this year, it's not enough for the film to register beyond that. Even if, after Ice Age Collision Course, I'll gladly take that. Thanks for watching the review, folks. As always, I'm your host, Mike Culligan of Cartoon Karma. If you liked what you saw, leave a like or a comment. That'd be pretty neat. Subscribing would be even neater. Or you can check out my other videos, where I cover animation of all shapes and sizes. Perhaps you can follow the channel on Facebook and Twitter. All your choice, but it sure bring a smile to my face. Until next time, folks.